In this video, we'll be discussing Aperture, how it works, its effects on exposure, and its aesthetics. In photography, exposure is the amount of light that enters the camera. Exposure is responsible for how light or dark a captured image will appear. Exposure is measured in photographic stops. Photographic stops aren't really a unit of measurement so much as they are actually a method of measurement. To assess how much light we have getting into the camera, we use the exposure level indicator, which is viewable through the viewfinder or the LCD. In the lower right hand part of what you're looking at here, you can see a view through a camera. At the bottom of it, there's a number line. That's the exposure level indicator. On the left hand side of the screen, I've also made a larger one, just to show you that it is a number line, and that number line represents photographic stops. A movement of one entire number on this line means that you have doubled or halved the amount of light getting into the camera. In this case, we've lost two stops, so we've cut the amount of light getting into the camera four times. Let's revisit the exposure triangle. The exposure triangle is a paradigm that says that exposure needs three components to function, aperture, shutter, and ISO. Here we're talking about the aperture, which is built into the lens of the camera. The aperture is made of a diaphragm of metal sheets which control the size of the pupil that allows light to enter into the camera. The camera's aperture is identified by F numbers or F stops, notated as a small hooked F and the number. This number is the answer to a simple division problem, which is the focal length of the lens divided by the diameter of the pupil. For instance, if you're using a 50 millimeter lens and the diameter is 6.25 millimeters, the F number is eight. Here we've got an image of several different aperture pupils related to their F numbers. You can see there's an inverse relationship to the size of the number and the size of the hole. The larger the number, the smaller the hole. The smaller the number, the larger the hole. Another relationship to be aware of is that between the pupil of the eye and the pupil of the aperture. You can see it here. It's pretty obvious. When the eye is exposed to extreme brightness, the iris closes in so that the hole of the entrance pupil gets smaller and less light gets into the retina. The same is true with the aperture. When situations are really bright, in general, you would close down the aperture to allow less light into the camera. There are aesthetic reasons to do otherwise, but essentially that's how it works. The smaller the hole, the less light getting into the camera. Let's take a look at a few different ways to access the aperture settings. Here, we've got a lens that has an aperture ring on it. It's a dial that you turn to control the size of the entrance pupil. Here's a close-up of that ring. It usually moves with a little bit of resistance. You can kind of feel some clicks on it. This feels significantly different than the zoom or the focus ring, which move very smoothly, kind of like butter. The aperture ring is usually closest to the camera's body, but check your user's manual to make sure. Here on a different camera body, we'll actually use the control dial and press the aperture exposure compensation button to toggle the function so that it changes the aperture setting. Now let's conduct an experiment so that we can see exactly how aperture affects exposure. We're shooting with a Canon here and we're in manual shooting mode. We're starting out at f5.6. Now recall the inverse relationship between the aperture pupil and the amount of light getting into the camera. When we turn this to f.8, we've reduced the light getting into the camera by one stop, which means we've cut that amount of light in half. Here at f11, we've cut it four times. That's pretty significant. At f16, which is the next full stop, we've cut it eight times. The picture is getting significantly darker. Let's open it back up to 5.6. Now let's compare our shots. On the left, f5.6, pretty bright. f16, not as bright. Back to shooting, let's set our camera to aperture priority shooting mode. This is a semi-automatic shooting mode where we dial in the aperture number, the f number, and the camera figures out the shutter speed for us. You might also notice on the exposure indication dial that we're one stop underexposed this is a personal bias. I just want this shot a little dark. 
Anyways, if you'll pay attention to the shutter speed in the aperture here, you'll see that when the aperture number changes, the F number, the shutter speed also changes. This is the automatic function of the camera to maintain that one stop under exposure I dialed in while I change the F number. You can see here we've gone through several F numbers. We started at 5.6 and we're going to end here at 32. Now let's compare our shots. You're going to notice something really interesting here. You'll see for the first time in this video the aesthetic of aperture. Look here, at the 5.6, it looks significantly different than the 32. In the 5.6, we really can't see the context where these flowers are photographed, whereas in the 32, we can see that they're in a big, deep, natural setting with trees in the background. This difference in focus is called depth of field. The aesthetic of depth of field is a result of the size of the entrance pupil of the aperture. Depth of field is the distance between the nearest and the furthest objects that are in acceptably sharp focus in an image. It has a powerful effect. Notice how on the image on the left, it's easy to tell the flowers are the main subject, whereas on the image on the right, they get a little bit lost in the setting. Now let's run this experiment with a different camera so you can see how different settings are displayed. This is a Fuji X-T2, a mirrorless. Over here, we've got the exposure level indicator, which is just a view of the number of stops underexposed you are. Here, we've got the aperture setting, and then over here, we've got the shutter speed. We're taking this shot at the wide open aperture of f4, and here's our shot, and this is what it looks like. Now let's redo this and actually change the aperture. We're going to close it down significantly to f22. You can watch the exposure level indicator here to see what happens while we do that. When we dial down the number, Actually, we're dialing it up, but we're closing down the aperture hole. You can see that we get really underexposed. We've got to compensate for that somewhere, and because we're in manual shooting mode, we're going to manually change the shutter speed. We're going to slow it down significantly, so we let a lot more light in that way because we've lost it through the aperture. And we just took our shot, and here's how it looks. Again, let's compare our shots. You're going to see a big aesthetic difference because of the depth of field. At f4, it's pretty easy to pick out those red flowers in the shot, whereas in f22, they again start to get lost because all of the context in the background is in focus. Now, let's repeat this experiment one more time with this fun guy here. <laughs> again, you can see the exposure level indicator and the aperture setting that we're choosing. We're a little underexposed, so we're going to adjust with the shutter, and here's our shot at f22. We're going to repeat it again, and this time, we're going to change the aperture so that we open it way up to f4 again, which is the maximum aperture on this particular lens. We're overexposed, so we've got to quicken the shutter to compensate for all that extra light. Look at that. That's a big difference, right? Now let's compare the shots again so that we can see them side by side, and you can really assess the aesthetic difference for yourself. At f22, it's a nice shot, but at f4, it's obvious what our main subject is. Because of the very shallow depth of field, the background has fallen out of focus, whereas at f22, most of the scene is in focus. Let's do one last experiment in studio. This is kind of a fun one. Here, I've put an analog lens on the camera, so the F number is going to read zero the entire time. However, I've got it set to F1.8. I like to use this lens sometimes in studio because of that wide open aperture of F1.8. It's got a really shallow depth of field. Look at that. That's kind of a neat shot, right? In the background, it just looks like a whole bunch of scallops of light. Let's repeat it. This time, we're going to set the F number to 22. Again, here, it's going to display a zero, but we're actually closing it down significantly. The light level dips there as we close it down, and then the LCD compensates. You can see we're really underexposed, so we've got to also compensate with the shutter speed, really slowing this down until we level out our exposure indicator at zero. And there it is, and let's take the shot, and let's review it. Comparing the two, you can see a really big difference. At f1.8, we don't know what the background is, it's just sort of this lovely mystical space. At f22, we can see that it's actually just illuminated tinfoil. It's pretty neat, it's something you can easily set up at home. All right, one last compare shot. This is a banded alder borer, try to say that fast, and I've shot it once here at f22, and then once at f1.8 with that same lens. And we're gonna check out the comparison here. And these are just shots right off the camera. There's really been no editing here. You can see it's a pretty big difference with a little bit of cropping. 
maybe a little bit more editing, that F1.8, the, what is it called, the banded alder boar beetle, is a lot easier to pick out. So far we've really emphasized the aesthetic of shallow depth of field, but there is sometimes reason to make sure that you're actually using a deep depth of field, like this close-up product shot of earrings. We want to get a lot of detail, so we shot this one at F16. And then here we emphasize a moderate depth of field at about F8, so that we get some of it in focus and some of it falling a little bit out of focus, but we still want to show the context of the whole scene. So it's really an aesthetic that's up to you to master and decide when and where to use.